Hello friends. Today I'm participating in the Thrift Flip Road Trip with the Crafting Cousins and Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs. There will be a whole playlist of people who are participating, so don't forget to go to the description box and find that playlist. But I'll talk more about that later. Let's get to crafting. Okay, on our first DIY, I got this bird at Savers in Kansas when I went to the For Love of Junk weekend back in September. I paid $3.99 for it, already took the tag off. It was a great deal. I'm just gonna clean it up and get all the yucky, sticky stuff off. And then I'm gonna use Hey Sailor by DIY paint and I'm gonna use a chippy brush and I'm just going to pounce it on so I can get it all in those little crevices and details. And I'm gonna do this all over the entire bird and even on the bottom. I'm gonna use my heat tool so that I can dry it, so I can hold it on other parts so I can get it all over. Then I'm going to take some Big Top Sealer by DIY and I think I'm gonna use this makeup brush because it will help spread it really evenly and get it all in the little nooks and crannies and crevices, but it didn't really work that great. So I ended up switching over to a regular paintbrush that actually worked a little bit better. So I gave it a, just a thin coat all over. It looks like i am got a lot on there, but that little bit went a long way. And so, yeah, you can see I just squirted a little bit and it, it really goes a long way. So I covered the entire thing and I let it dry completely. And then I'm going to use my white wax. Now I did this because I didn't want the white wax to be too much. So this keeps it from being too much. But it and it's perfect. So I'm taking the white wax and that makeup brush. I get them on Amazon. They're in my Amazon storefront link that's in the description box below. And I'm just wiping it on with this brush. I absolutely love these brushes. They are so good for multiple uh, purposes. I use it for stencil brush. I use it to apply waxes. I absolutely love, love, love them. Now I'm using an old piece of a t-shirt just to wipe it back. It's my favorite method to wipe back the waxes. Um, you can wipe as much back or as little back as you want. I really wanted that, that white wax just to be down in all the creases and the cracks and you know, you're seeing, you can just see what I'm doing. And I'm not real sure why I decided to show you all of this, except maybe I decided I was gonna talk a little bit in this video. But this is what I did, and the parts that were hard to get to, I just put the wax, a little bit of wax on the cloth and got it in there. And then at one point, I took a little toothpick and I put some wax on the toothpick and poked it in there. And then I put the toothpick in the t-shirt and buffed it out like that. And that is done. Let me know what you think about my beautiful bluebird for my bedroom that matches my bedroom decor. I don't have any video of our actual time in the thrift store, but this was the whole crew on the For Love of Junk weekend. We had a blast thrifting and making over our thrift finds. And this is where I got all three of my items today, including this adorable bunny I got on sale at Savers for $3.99. And I knew when I saw it that I was gonna do a two-sided project with this adorable little lightweight wood bunny. This wood is so lightweight and I just knew I could make it adorable. So I'm gonna use a mold on it and one of my sweet viewers uh, suggested that I try this hardy, hardy soft clay because I don't necessarily love clay, I love to use resin. So she suggested this and that I might like it. So I, there's a learning curve for me on this. It's real spongy and it stays soft for a long time so that you're able to actually work with it. And, and um, there are a lot of benefits to that. 
but I mean, it took me a little while to figure it out. Like when I'm trying to scrape it back there um, with this IOD mold that has the little lip that you can just scrape it back. I was, it was pulling out of the mold for me and I had to keep pressing it back down in there. So I'm not sure what I was doing wrong, but I just kept pressing it down in there and I like for the back of it to be really flat. So I kept trying to use my little scraper tool that I always use um, with my regular clay and it just kept trying to pull it out of the mold. So I just, I just worked with it a little bit and I made it, I made it work. And then I left it in the mold to kind of dry just out, out of convenience, not for any particular reason, just because I had other things to do. I decided to go ahead and start painting on our little bunny. Um, so I just left it in there to dry. Then I grabbed Farm Fresh by DIY. I get all my DIY paints um, from SammyUnicornDustDesigns.com. She sells IOD products, salt wash, all kinds of wonderful products. Go over and check out her website. I'll have a link to it in the description box below. Or you can just go over to www.unicorndustdesigns.com. Now, this is Farm Fresh. I love this color. It's one of my favorite colors that they have. And don't ask me why I painted these stripes, the colors that I did, and why I placed them where I did. It just happened the way it did. This French Miller Mill. Nuri, I love this too. I just can't say it. And it's a beautiful, beautiful purple. Now, then I took cake batter. Only skipped one row and then painted both. Then painted two in a row. No idea why. Just trying to be different, I guess. I don't know. This is just what struck me the night I was painting. And when I looked at it later, I was thinking, why did I paint those stripes the way that I did? Who knows? Okay. So while those dry, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do this decoupage. It's called tissue paper. Okay, let me tell you about this stuff. It is beautiful. It's amazing. It's very easy to work with, but it is not paper. It is more like fabric. It has a texture to it and it has fibers in it. So this Mod Podge did not work with it like tissue paper or paper. I was going to try this method that everybody uses and just do a little bit, and I was really going to try to do it. I couldn't. I had to do my iron-on method like I always, always do that is flawless. So you'll see me here. I do try to do it, and I just couldn't do it. But this is super thick. It's, it's really like fabric, and it's almost kind of like a little bit of mesh too. So I went ahead, and I just put a coat of Mod Podge on our bunny and let it dry completely. And then I ironed the paper down with my mini iron. As I mentioned in the intro, this video is a part of the Thrift Flip Road Trip hosted by the Crafting Cousins and Sammy Unicorn Dust Designs every other month. It is an open playlist. Anyone can join it that has a YouTube channel and loves to create. When we do thrift flips or just trash to treasure, um, makeover decors, anything that we can't that's old and needs a makeover, and we make it beautiful again. In the description box below will be the playlist where you can watch all the amazing creators and all the thrift flips that we did for this thrift flip road trip. Okay, now that we have this all ironed on, I'm gonna trim it down really close and I thought I was going to do the burn off method. Well, you're gonna see really quickly that that didn't work because this almost, when I burned it, almost acted like it had a little plastic in it, it melted. So I just decided I was gonna take this um, emery board nail file which I would never use it on my nails. It's way too rough. And it it just kind of ate it up because it's more like fabric, guys. I don't really know what this is. If you've used this before, you can, you, you'll can you know what I'm talking about. So I took these tiny little fingernail scissors and I just went around the edge and cut it. And it turned out fine. It That worked the best. And then in the little opening, I used my X-Acto knife and just laid it against the wood and cut it. And 
it worked fine. I tried to sand it a little bit more and it really just worked fine to cut it. So this is what it looked like when it was finished. And now I'm gonna clean up my mess with my little tabletop vacuum, which I absolutely love. Everyone should have one of those in their craft room. Now I'm gonna make a little messy bow and I'm gonna use this beautiful crocheted lace ribbon I get at Dollar Tree and this little chiffon lace I got on Sheen and it came three little rolls in a package for just a buck or so. And I'm just gonna cut some little pieces that are all about the same length. I didn't even care if they were all the same length or not because guess what? This is a messy bow. And I'm just seeing how many of those I need. Now my sweet friend Brandy from Making It My Own DIYs brought me this little bow dabber because she heard me say that I had watched somebody use one and I thought it would be cool. So she brought me one on the cruise that she had gotten at the Goodwill bins. And so thank you, thank you, thank you, Brandy, because look how easy it was to make this adorable little bow. I'm looking forward to using it to make other bows as well. It just, you know, you can make those bows, but that was just easy. Okay, back to our clay. That it stayed very pliable. It still feels very almost wet. I'm going to adhere it with some tight bond quick and thick glue. And when I put it on, it makes it feel a little bit slimy. I was going to use some hot glue, but I was afraid it was going to melt it because that's just kind of how it felt. And when I'm not familiar with it, I'm just going to use what I think will work. So I'm just going to lay it down on that because we're going to paint that with the Farm Fresh as well. And I just took my X-Acto knife and trimmed that off and it does mold. I was able to press it down and mold it into the sides. That was a very um, nice feature that I was able to, it was still pliable enough to mold it into that. So that was nice. Now I'm going to take that Farm Fresh and a very small well, I started out with that one. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have this little flower that's from that same mold that I had poured extra one time with some resin. And so I'm gonna paint that with the Farm Fresh and then I'm taking a smaller chippy brush and I'm just gonna paint this whole row and blend it in with that um, original row that we had painted with the Farm Fresh earlier. Now, I was afraid when I was stippling this on that it was going to change the texture of this clay. So I was being trying to be gentle, but I also want to stipple it into all the details. So this was definitely, like I said, there's a learning curve for me on this um, clay. Let me know if you've ever tried this um, airsoft, I think it's called hardy airsoft clay. So I'm going to try to dry these up with my air gun, which I always do my resin pieces, but I was afraid to because I was afraid it was going to melt it and it did change the texture of it a tiny bit so I, I stopped and I, so then I uh, decided that the center of those little dots needed a, we needed a little contrast so I took crinoline by DIY and just put a little dot in the middle of those flowers and then I put a little on my chippy brush and dry brushed just a wee little bit on the um, little planks that didn't have any color and then with that chiffon lace I made a little tiny bow and put it on there and put the little flower in the center and then here's my little messy bow and then I just cut another little strip to put in the center and we're going to put it on that side you can just see what I'm doing I don't even need to talk my voice is a little crackly because in Texas our weather right now is so crazy we had thunderstorms last night, and some places around got had some, um, I hear some places had hail, and it was really chilly and windy today, and it has been in the upper 80s, so, or in the 80s, so yeah. Okay, I'm going to make a finger bow with this chiffon lace. This is so easy. Just wrap it around your fingers a couple times, and then leave a long tail. I left a little tail um, when I started out, but I'm going to leave a long tail right here. You see my little tail there, and then I'm going to bring it around, and I'm going to poke it down in the middle right there. 
I'm going to bring it up into the middle. And then that little loop by my thumb, I'm going to go to my thumb underneath it, pull it up toward my finger, my index finger. And as long as that, where the knot's going to be is right in the middle, put it right in the middle of those two fingers and then pull really tight toward the bottom of the bow. Pull it off your fingers and then you have the most adorable little finger bow. And that's how I made that little bow. And then I just glued that little flower to the center. And we have a two-sided bunny. So this is really two DIYs in one. Okay, for this DIY, this one came from the Savers Thrift Store as well. It's some type of, you know, cutting board, hot plate, something. The front part of it was all cut on and melted. And so um, I just decided to use the backside. So we're going to spray some alcohol on there, use my little Cricut scraper tool, scrape all of that gunky stuff off. It came off really easy, I think, because... Um, it was such a slick surface to begin with. So I got my um, sanding block out to scruff it up a little bit and found out there was still some sticky on it. And went ahead and cleaned it up, gave it just a little rough sand. Now I'm gonna take Vintage Linen by DIY and some paint inlays by IOD. And I chose this one, so I trimmed it up, seeing how it fits. Then I flipped it over on that printed side and just used some glue. I used some of that uh, tight bond quick and thick glue and glued some craft paper to the back side. And now I'm just trimming it off, just using that um, fingernail file to just trim it. You could use scissors. You could use an X-Acto knife. Um, I'm, prob I'm definitely going to keep this at my house. So I didn't really mind too much if the back was perfect. If I were going to resell it, I would have done a much better job on it. But I do want it to be finished out. Now I'm going to use that Vintage Linen by DIY. And I'm going to give it one good coat and let it dry really good. And then I went in with a second coat. And I'm putting a pretty thick coat on it so that it stays nice and moist. And then we're going to put the paint inlay. This is my very first time ever using a paint inlay. So be patient with me. Um, so I got a thick coat on there. Now, the thing you're supposed to do is lay it down in your wet paint and press it down in there. So I kind of pressed it down in there a little bit. I think I maybe I should have pressed it down a little more at this point but I just tapped it down into the paint, smoothed it out, and then I took my uh, Mr. Sprayer bottle, and you'll be able to tell when it kind of starts to change colors. I don't think you can see the sprayer bottle in the camera, but you can see right there it started changing colors. That's when I got it wet. And then I just took a little cloth and tried to pat, pat it down into the paint. And then I took some quick bond, um, and tight bond, quick and thick, and some hot glue, and glued that little medallion to the top. Now, I'm going to show you how I pour resin. One of my viewers asked if I would show this, and so I did. Now, I'm going to use parts A and B. I do have some resin um, linked in my description box below in smaller quantities. I buy in larger quantities because I use a lot. So you mix equal parts A and B. I'm stirring it. I stir it until I can start it, it to feel warm in the container. Once it starts to feel slightly warm, I know it's time. I'm doing all of this in real time so you can see it. You're going to be amazed. Now, 
once you start pouring, you have to pour. You can't dilly-dally around because it sets up really fast. Um, I love these IOD molds because they have that nice little lip and it's it's not very hard to it's hard to over pour if you are very careful. And so I'm just going to make a bunch of these flowers. Sometimes I use them as medallions. Um, sometimes they look, it depends on how you paint them, what they look like. You can paint them to look like flowers. You can use them as medallions. Now I'm keeping this in real time. I'm not speeding this up because I want you to see how fast it starts to cure. You can see a little reflection of the light on there right now, but very shortly you are going to start to see it turn white and you're going to start to see how fast it begins to cure before I even start finish pouring the last one. Now, I've run out of resin and can't fill the entire last mold up. And as I pop them out, you're going to see that I went ahead and poured it in. But it, it went ahead. I think it's the next one. It went ahead and... Um, made a really cute little flower anyway okay do you see it starting to turn white this is real time i did not speed this up i promise it is turning white that fast once it starts to cure now i didn't leave it for all of them to cure full time on the camera but in 10 to 15 minutes they are fully cured and you can pop them out and use them Okay, so here I'm popping them out to show you how beautiful they are. This one, um, this one cures to white. There is uh, some that cures to clear, but it takes a much longer time to set up. If you have any questions about this, be sure and leave a comment in the description in the comment section below, and I'll try to answer. Um, what I know about it. That's the one that was just the partial um, and I just poured part of it and it still turned out really cute. And that I'm sh showing you that those are set up really firmly. Okay, back to our project piece. Okay, it's completely dry now. It's the next day. I actually let it set overnight because it got really late at night and I left the craft cottage and went back in the house. Now I'm spritzing it down with water really good as per the instructions and spray it down a little bit more. I wanted to make sure I got it nice and wet because we want to reactivate that paper so we can lift it up. Now they say you can use this a couple times. I've seen Sammy do this where her second time looked just as good as the first time. So I definitely saved this piece of paper. Now I'm barely patting this to just take off some of that moisture and or most of the moisture. And now I'm just going to gently peel this back and look how beautiful, how beautiful that paint is. It's just like I painted this on that white paint as if I had taken a tiny little paintbrush and painted that on there. The IOD sisters are genius. Now, there was a little place around each where the, where it, the design stopped, and I just took a little paintbrush with some water and kind of smeared it, and it, it took that, most of that away. Now, I'm just gonna put a little hanger on the back because I put that medallion over the hole and I didn't really want it to look like a cutting board. And so I'm just making a hanger on the back. I also was kind of kicking myself because I thought, man, in the fall, what a cool pumpkin this would have been. But I do love how it turned out. And I am going to have it in my decor in my house. So um, I'm just using some twine and some hot glue and a little Little, some little pieces of canvas drop cloth to secure it because it's not super heavy, but I want it to, to hang right. So I'm going to just put that. Now, I'm going to probably display this on an easel and not hang it on the wall, but in case I ever do want to hang it on the wall or in case I want to give it to somebody and they want to hang it on the wall, the hanger will be there. Now, the hanger wasn't quite 
perfection in my opinion it didn't look like it was going to hang straight up in the middle so i went ahead and pulled the string off because that was driving me crazy but i went ahead and cut a couple more little pieces of that uh, drop cloth and extended it so i pulled it a little bit toward the right you can see that so that that would be right up in the middle because i'm a little bit pedantic that way so yeah that's what i did then I took Old School, which is one of my favorite DIY paint colors, and I just dry brushed around the medallion to bring out those details in that IOD mold, and then around the edges just to, I call it, outline it. I didn't, I just put that paint on the edge of the paintbrush, and then laid the edge of that paintbrush flat down and just ran it around the edges, and I did it with with a pretty dry brush because I didn't want it, you know, to go everywhere. And then I I did it a little bit on the edges and then I just took that dry brush and pulled it up around the edges. Then I took a paper towel and just blended it all in. Then I took this final fixative outside and gave it a spray of that because I didn't want anything to smear after I had done all that work and it was my first time using it so I didn't want to mess anything up. Now I'm making a bow, just a simple bow. You can see what I'm doing. Um, this beautiful ribbon that I got at Sam's Club. They have some beautiful ribbon out right now. If they're not sold out, you better rush out and grab a roll. It is $7.98 a roll, but it has 50 yards of ribbon on there, guys. I have some that I've had for three or four years and I'm still using it. Now, I don't make tons of wreaths or anything where I use a lot of ribbon. Usually what you see me using here is about how much ribbon I use per project. I'm not a huge floral ribbon user, but if you are, especially if you are, you need some of this because it's gonna go a long way. So just making a cute, simple little bow and you know, you could put some greenery if you wanted to add a little extra. You could also add some greenery behind your bow once you glue your bow down. Um, you could add, I mean, the possibilities are endless. You can get creative. I love going um, like the For Love of Junk Weekend, for the Crafty Cruise that we just did. I love getting together with other crafters just to see how differently uh, people create with the same products. So the end of the month, um, I'm going to have a collab with some friends and we're using the same products and we're going to see how different we create those. So that, so be sure to watch for that um, video at the end of the month. So that's the end of this video. So let me know what you think about these DIYs for spring or year round honestly the birds and this one i hope that you enjoyed these thrift flips as much as i enjoyed making them don't forget to like this video give it a thumbs up leave a comment below and make sure that you are subscribed i'm so close to 10,000 subscribers and i'd really like to get there soon and get that giveaway gift in the mail to one lucky subscriber it's going to be 10 of my must-have crafting items. You are going to want to participate in that. So let's make sure everybody's subscribed so that we can do that giveaway. Also, don't forget to check out the playlist in the description box below. But most of all, remember to be still and know that He is God.